Good morning. This is uh, Thursday, July 15th, and I'd like to begin by wishing Trevor Clark a happy birthday. I think you're 14 now. Is that right? It seems like you was just a little guy the other day. I was taking you fishing. I think he was about four or five. But happy birthday, Trev. I hope you have a great day, and you and your dad get to go out and do something. Today's devotion is my life's spiritual honor and duty. This is Romans 1.14. I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to the barbarians. Paul was overwhelmed with the sense of his indebtedness to Jesus Christ, and he spent his life to express it. The greatest inspiration in Paul's life was his view of Jesus Christ as his spiritual creditor, meaning he took on his sins. Do I feel the same sense of indebtedness to Christ regarding every unsaved soul? Paul wanted to get everybody saved. As a saint, my life's spiritual honor and duty is to fulfill my debt to Jesus in relation to these lost souls. In other words, win as many as you can. Every tiny bit of my life that has value, I owe to the redemption of Jesus Christ. Am I doing anything to enable him to bring his redemption into evident reality in the lives of others? In other words, are you living Christ out so freely and so fully that people will see that and through the Holy Spirit be drawn to Jesus. I will only be able to do this as the Spirit of God works into me this sense of indebtedness. And there's great freedom in being indebted to Christ. It means that responsibility for those sins has been lifted. That's what Paul's talking about here. I am not a superior person among other people. I'm a bondservant to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, you are not your own, you were bought with a price. Again, tremendous freedom in saying that. That's 1 Corinthians 6. Paul sold himself to Jesus Christ, and he said, in effect, I am a debtor to everyone on the face of the earth because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am free only that I may be an absolute bondservant of his. That is the characteristic of a Christian's life once this level of spiritual honor and duty becomes real. In other words, we say that once we realize what we owe Jesus for redeeming us. So quit praying about yourself. I love that. Quit praying about yourself and spend your life for the sake of others as this bondservant of Jesus Christ. That's the true meaning of being broken bread and poured out wine in real life. The challenge I have today for us is interesting. As you pray today, not if you pray, but when you pray, as Jesus said in Matthew, when you pray today, do not pray for yourself. Intentionally do not pray for you, but pray for another. Find somebody in your thinking that God will lay upon your heart to pray for. And God's got you, so trust him. But find someone else to pray for. As Oswald said, quit praying for you. Pray for somebody else. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for uh, the indebtedness that Paul taught and preached. Lord, there's, there's great freedom in that. Because that bill, that wages of sin is death, that was paid off. And you are indeed our spiritual debtor. So, Father, we thank you for all you've given to us. You've given us those, that freedom that comes from uh, redemption. Be with us today, Father, as we lift others to you and set us free in the process. Let us hunger to display your honor amongst others. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.